Hello, NRPA. How's everyone going? I am uh, joined here today. My name is Jay Tryon. I work for the Town of Indian Trail Park and Recreation in North Carolina uh, as part of the NRPA and the Young Professional Network to help provide resources about park and recreation. We're welcoming the next vlog series on professional development. Today we're going to talk about morale, welfare, and recreation, which is otherwise known as MWR. Uh, MWR provides recreation to military personnel and their families. Facilities vary from base to base, but uh, they may include programs of fitness centers, pools, marinas, bowling centers, golf courses, restaurants, uh, special events, movies, and a wide variety of activities. Today I'm joined with John Peru, who is from the Naval Station Great Lakes in Illinois. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today to speak on this topic. Uh, why don't you start off with giving us a little description on your position and how you got involved with MWR. Great. Well, good morning, Jay. Good to talk to you. Um, well, I am the Installation Program Director at uh, Naval Station Great Lakes, uh, overseeing not only the MWR components, which you talk about, uh, but also oversee the lodging program, which includes a 302-room uh, DOD hotel as well. So I've got a little few things under my belt. I've been with the Navy and Great Lakes for over 28 years. I actually started as a college intern out of the University of Wisconsin La Crosse and in uh, 28 years, I'm still here, <laughs> at least for now. So That's we'll impressive. see what happens. Yeah, a little, little unique. Uh, usually, you move around to different bases uh, in our business uh, as you go up the chain of command, and a lot of fortunate things have happened. I've been able to stay local here uh, yeah. in that time. But we are doing lots of great things for sailors and families. We're excited about it, uh, whether it's uh, you know community activities or it's uh, intramural league sports and fitness. Uh, we are the Navy's only boot camp, so we have a lot of young 18 to 24 year old sailors, and and for the first time they're seeing some of these services and benefits that they get called morale, welfare, and recreation. So we do a lot to kind of promote MWR because it is the first time they're experiencing it, and we want them to experience the best here at Great Lakes. I also uh, work with NRPA quite closely, and I'm the U.S. Navy representative uh, for the Armed Forces. Network Leadership Board. Uh, so I do rep all of the Navy in that capacity. So that's great. Well, could be here this time. No, and, and I know NRPA is really reaching out a lot more with the Armed Forces, and that's going great. But can you give us some of the similarities, or, or maybe any differences, if there are any, between a MWR position and career and a Park and Recreation position career with a municipality or local government, local town? Well, yeah, I, I certainly can. And actually, there's less uh, differences than there are um, similarities. It, it, you know, when it comes down to it, this is recreation. This is quality of life programs and services. And uh, a lot of our folks are coming right out of school with the same degrees, uh, you know, recreation administration, sports and entertainment management, management, whatever. And it comes down to it, we're delivering recreational programs and services. And there is no difference whether you're on a military base or out in a community uh, or a municipality from that kind, especially at the entry level and mid level management jobs, running a facility, same features, same same uh, emphasis that we put on various things are the same right across the board. I think the biggest difference is when you look at our funding structure, and although we all we all operate on taxpayer dollars of some kind, uh, it's actually a pretty small percentage for MWR, uh, anywhere from maybe 20, 25, maybe as high as 30% of our budget is taxpayer dollars for those core programs, what we call Category A programs. Um, and then the other two sources of revenue is our user fees. Again, not too different from what's happening in the municipality. Um, but then also we have a third source of funds, and that comes from our exchange system. Uh, whether it's a PX on our Army base or we call it the Navy Exchange on the Navy, a uh, good chunk of money comes in to help support quality of life programs or recapitalization, things like that. So that's kind of a, a unique standpoint. We have those three sources of funding, and that's probably the biggest difference. Okay. Uh, quite honestly, we all take care of people. We all provide quality of life programs, so we're not all that different, to be honest. Well, that's great. How many bases are there throughout the country? Well, um, believe it or not, if you want to count the camps and various other places where people are deployed to, uh, the ships where we have actually re recreation uh, folks in there, there's 500-plus military or Coast Guard bases, stations across the world. 
uh, probably about 300 major installations that you would think of if you think of the larger bases across the way, but 500 plus. And we support a customer base of 6.7 million worldwide. So a large organization. Yeah, that's huge. Well, you talked about it uh, briefly earlier with the internship program, and I know firsthand I went through the internship program with Great Lakes in my uh, senior year of my uh, college degree, and, and a lot of park and rec professionals are required to do internships, and can you tell us more about the program that you have both at Great Lakes and that MWR programs have for interns? Well, we almost had to get rid of our internship program after you went through it, Jay, because you broke the mold, but... Uh... <laughs> Um, no, there's uh, it, it's it, it's an unique. It's different from uh, service to service. Um, the Coast Guard is one entity that has a centralized program, uh, probably the the most centralized program of everything. Bob Davis with the Coast Guard is um, uh, the guy you submit your um, resume and application to, and then they place at least a couple interns every semester out at various Coast Guard stations. Um, the Army uh, has a program. Uh, we're going to set up some links and make sure everything's available. Uh, the Navy is very decentralized, although we have some good programs on our website that talk about it. It just steers you to the individual bases that are running internships. And uh, in uh, Marine Corps, the Air Force, I, don't be- I do not believe they're doing anything at this time, uh, but the Marine Corps has a decent program as well. Uh, I do want to mention a little bit about Great Lakes and, yeah. and just talk about the internship program. Uh, our focus with with the internship is to make sure that the uh, student it gets the quality experience. We treat them like quasi-management. They're going to get the total internship experience. This is not going to be a horror story um, in that they're, you know, schlepping boxes in the back of a warehouse or doing dishes, you know, for 16 weeks mm-hmm. in there. Uh, they are going to get a chance to manage programs, run special events, uh, even get a chance to lead people, uh, not necessarily supervise them, but lead them uh, as a as a head of an event or something like that. Um, and then they're going to get a chance to meet all of our managers and really get a chance to talk to them and find out the insights of running a facility and running a, a recreational program. And so we're we're kind of excited about it, and I, I do believe my counterparts throughout the Navy and, and pretty much through all the services take that same tack, that we want to make sure that they get a quality experience. Or guess what? The, the well of interns are going to dry up real quick if you don't do it right. And so we try to do it that way. And I can speak firsthand with that. It was almost 10 years ago, and I still to this day will take things that I learned during that process. Um, and, and it wasn't just one focus. I mean, I was doing special events. I was doing tournaments and leagues and daily inter- interaction with the with the personnel and the family. So it was definitely an experience that I have never forgotten and, and helped me along the way uh, with my park and rec degree in my field. So it was a great opportunity. Well, why don't we? What are some of the links or some sites that people can go to if they want to learn more about the departments and the internship program, or just for jobs as well if they're looking for a, for a career to start. Well, each of the services has uh, has a website you can go to that you can find out about it specifically what we do, um, and all of those talk about jobs in, in various areas. So um, I'm going to talk specifically about the Navy, uh, NavyMWR.org. Uh, if you go there, you will really find out more about Navy MWR. You'll be able to link to all the different base MWR websites, and then we also have an internship link and a jobs link that is uh, posted on there. Matter of fact, the Marine Corps' uh, website is actually posted off of there as well, so we've got a link up for them. Um, And then what we'll do is, uh, without rattling off a bunch of uh, websites here, we'll try to get a link up uh, along with this video so that people can go to the other services. But lots of good stuff out there. You can always Google them as well. If you put uh, uh, Air Force... MWR, they call themselves services, it'll come up there. Same thing with uh, Marine Corps, Army, um, it's pretty easy to find. And, and we'll get some good web, good links up there so you can check it out. But lots of good stuff happening in Armed Forces Recreation for sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll connect some links to the video and people can can uh, go take, that, take a look at that. I definitely would recommend anyone that's watching this video, take a look at the, the offerings that they have, not just for careers and jobs, but more information um, with sending out to any other colleagues you have that may be looking for something or internships, the 
the offerings that MWR have um, are endless, and they also are some of the most rewarding opportunities you could possibly do to be able to interact with the you know the military folk that are out there training every day and be able to provide these services is a great service that I can honestly say that I still think about on a regular basis. So on behalf of NRPA and the Young Professional Network, I really thank you for the time that we've had. And like I said, I really hope everyone can take a look at these links. But thank you for spending the time with us today to tell us about MWR. Can I get you? Can I get one more plug in there? <laughs> I'll do what I can do. I, I I can't speak highly enough on the program. That's for sure. All right. Well, just just let everybody know we are doing another session at the NRPA uh, in Charlotte uh, on Armed Forces Recreation. We're going to go into more detail about this stuff. You get a chance to meet all the service reps at that time, and we're talking sixty five thousand plus MWR folks out there working worldwide, supporting supporting active duty members and their families. And this is a two point six billion dollar industry. So if you don't know about Armed Forces Recreation, you should check it out because there are some opportunities. There you go. Thanks for your time today, Jay. Well, thank you once again, everyone. Take a look at it. If you're out at Charlotte this year for NRPA Congress, they will have a session. Uh, and like I said, once again, on behalf of NRPA Young Professional Network, I thank you for spending the time and look out for future vlogs that are going to be coming out in the future. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs>